Hail and well met, uh, lords and ladies, uh, gentle sirs. Uh, this would be a right fine day to uh, speak of these uh, fire sticks that I've uh, uh, procured. Uh, or something like that is how they would speak back in the 18th century. Say 1720 to 1750 or thereabouts. And that would be about the right time for this. It's a Spanish flintlock pistol. And this one, <coughs> this is called a, a, I forget, a trapper, I think. Uh, and it's uh, based on a 18th century British design. This, by the way, is, a, an eight, is an old safety for these things. You cover up the steel. By the way, the, the parts of a flintlock include the strike or hammer or, well, no, this isn't the hammer. This is the, the striker. This is the, the hammer, it's called. Don't know why, but it is. This is a cover plate for the pan with a piece of steel that will contact the flint here and this. This is a set trigger, so I pull this one and that sets the front trigger and watch. Do you see the spark? That would have set this off if it were loaded. And this is a, uh, let me pull this back just a scotch, shove that in and put it back. This, no, it's not working right. Put it down. No. Put it to half cock. Put it like this, all the way down. There. So it's held in place. Uh, this is a, uh, it's a very good uh, uh, flintlock pistol. But what you, the first kind of flintlock you'd probably run into is this. This is a smooth blower blunderbuss. <laughs> And these are so much fun to shoot. They are so much fun. Uh, you put uh, a load of powder, usually about 80 or 100 grains or so, and then anything you like, nails, glass, pebbles, rock, shot, whatever, down the bore of this thing, and then cock it, put some powder in the pan, and fire it. And this one has a brutal trigger, probably about 30 pounds. But uh, once you get it to, to, to go off, it sounds like thunder. It really does. It's a very interesting weapon. I love it. Well, I have a, several different examples of the flintlock era. Let's see, which should I go with first? This one. I think this is like a, a like a Hawken style. I think this is Spanish. It's kind of a cheap one, but uh, I worked on it a little bit, tried to make it a little better, and we do have a decent flint on it now. We can get a good spark. And it does work, but it's uh, narrow here. It, well, that, that's normal for this. I'm not really an expert on the various styles and, and types of flint locks, but this one still needs a bit of work. But it's, uh, it's a good old shooter. I mean, it will shoot. I've shot it. I've shot every one of these. But one you would definitely see, because the Redcoats would be carrying it, would be this. This monster is a land pattern musket. This was the standard rifle, well, it's not a rifle, this is a smoothbore. This is the standard firearm of a Redcoat fighting in the Peninsular War. What's the Peninsular War? That was one of the last wars of the Napoleonic Wars. It was... Um, uh, Wellington uh, in uh, uh, Spain and Portugal fighting against uh, Napoleon's troops. And uh, matter of fact, the flint I have on here is from the uh, Peninsular War. So it's a long story. And this is an Indian made, uh, one of those uh, uh, pipe bombs they say they are. No, it's secure, it's well built, and it shoots just fine, but it's a uh, it's, it's a clunky uh, foreign made uh, thing that has a, a pretty soft uh, uh, stock on it. I don't know what wood they use, but it's a, it's a little just a little beyond balsa wood. But it's a, 
it works and it's a good example of type. Ooh. Put this back over here. It's uh, oh, this thing is so heavy and hard to uh, manipulate. By the way, you notice the bayonet on the tip of this. The um, this was a standard issue before they came up with the, so the socket bayonet. You had a gizmo that would basically fit directly into the bore and hold, and then you could go and attack with that. Uh, by the way, I do have also for it <coughs> the correct part cartridge box. It's uh, you would load up uh, paper cartridges, and that's what you'd carry. Uh, to be in the British Army required you to have at least two good teeth, one on the top and one on the bottom, you could use for cutting through the, uh, the folded over paper on the end of the paper cartridge and spit it out and then pour the powder down the board. Uh, by the way, that's exactly how any one of these works. You pour powder down the bore and in, in the case of a cartridge gun, the powder is contained in a little paper cartridge. Pour it down, then turn it around if the bullet is on the end of the other side of the cartridge, put it in here, <clears throat> then use the ramrod, push it down, and push it all the way to the base, all the way. Never, never stop about halfway and leave a huge gap because you're asking for a bomb then. But my absolute favorite flintlock is this one. This is an Austin Howe, uh, an Austin... My, oh hell, I'll just use this because it's got a magnifier on it. I can't tell without this. Uh, Austin Halleck, that's it. Austin Halleck flintlock. This is a 50 caliber, very heavy barrel. And uh, it's, I think, absolutely gorgeous. It has this uh, curly maple stock on it that just swirls. And dances. It just looks gorgeous. It's got a set trigger and uh, it's also got one of these uh, Peninsular War flints on it and it works like a dream. I can go shot shooting this, uh, hunting with it. I don't want like hunting because damn this thing is heavy. It is just so bloody heavy. Uh, but if I was going out shooting uh, uh, North American bison or you know moose something big this is what you'd wish to have. Though if I was going out, I'd want to have a revolver on my hip too, just in case, <laughs> but uh, and a big one. <clears throat> but this is just such a beautiful example of, of uh, craftsmanship in gun making. <clears throat> no, it's not a uh, custom gun. This is an actual factory gun. But uh, and the guy, the traditions bought up the the works for this when uh, Austin Halleck went out of business uh, about 2010, 2009, 2010, around there. Uh, they'd moved from, uh, I think uh, they were down in Missouri, and they moved to Ogden, Utah, and worked there a few years. But I think that this is from a 2009. Now, if you read up on it, you'll find that the, the Ogden uh, barrels are not supposed to be the best work of, of Austin Halleck. I don't know who said that, because this is absolutely beautiful. It's got this buckhorn sight and a nice little gold leaf on the front. It's just a nice gun. This is just, you feel... You feel like, like you're akin to Davy Crockett or Daniel Boone when you're holding this thing. It just is a beautiful gun. And I've got a, a, a pan pick on here and a brush to clean it off. And, uh, you know, you gotta, you got to have the proper tools. Anyway, I've also got a powder horn. I didn't shoot, set a powder horn out. I should have set one out. Uh, I'm not going to shoot these today, guys, because, first of all, I hate limping around the yard with a gun. It's... Uh, <clears throat> It's not exactly a, a good look for me, you know? The problem with getting to be an old man is that you, you act like an old man. Well, but I can still sound like a pirate. Yar! <laughs> it's uh, kind of fun. Flintlocks, and the beauty, beauty of flintlocks is once you have the flintlock itself, a good source of chert or flint, and the materials to make your own black powder. And it's not that hard to make black powder. I've made it many times. Uh, it's an easy material to, to work with. You can make balls 
Or if, if bad comes to worse, you just go down to the riverbank and find yourself some, some smooth, properly polished uh, pebbles that are roundish and around 50 caliber, and then use a wad to hold it in place. You can go out and, and shoot squirrels or, or deer or uh, rabbits or whatever you need for food with those, those rocks. And they'll work. They'll work fine. They worked a thousand years ago. They'll work fine now. I mean, they used to throw them in a sling. This is just throwing them with gunpowder. Same, same idea. It's just a slug thrower. But it's a, a beautiful one. It is, it is the, uh, the highest point of the art before the invention of the percussion cap. Now, I've got a whole bunch of percussion rifles, but uh, these are my, uh, uh, my various flintlock offerings. And they're cool. I think they're just absolutely cool. What do you think? If you like, give me a like. And by the way, for the, any of the recent subscribers who showed up, thank you. So, as I said, hail and well met, and till we see each other again. <laughs>